Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the city of Hayden, which I thought was the capital of Leonis's empire, but is actually not. The capital is down here, and it is known as Tristone. So Leonis now has three large cities, and he just founded a new one right on the border of Geldorf. I'm Marcus Aurelius, and this is Age of Wonders 3, a roleplay campaign where you, the viewer, gets to make the decisions. And this being a council episode, you will get to make some decisions at the end of this. But one of those decisions is not going to be what spell to research, because we are going to research... Or we're not... Oh, the main of Earth. Right. Preston Garvey. We don't have any theocrats, at least not that I could see. Let's see, you have a choice between Mastermind, which will give you Charm, or Shadow Blade, Cunning Escape, and Sadism. Shadow Form, and Smokescreen. Hmm. I think Preston could actually use some more hit points, really. And actually, Sprint is always a good skill to have. Alright. Rigoberto and Preston are going to head up toward the Necromancers. It's tough going. They have to hack through a bunch of underground vegetation. It's been difficult for them. She's got her diadem. All right. Anya and Ignatius. We have to build a road through this pass, though. It takes forever to get through it. Meanwhile, Leonis is just conquering everything. Yeah, he got the Heart of the Arctic. Which removes all Arctic terrain penalties when located within your domain. I mean, we need to take this guy down. He'll only get stronger. What's this? Is that another heart of the Arctic? How many are there? And there's a statue. And then there's that Wraith Castle we need to take too in order to get the bonus. There we go, that sucker. That's not too... Oh, it's Drew. So I was like, that's... who's the enemy over there? Alright, Lashanti. Treacherous Cliffs. Scout. Is that Leonis? Yeah. Well, we have open borders. Might as well use them. See what's going on. Engineers. Let's continue building our road. Should we go the high road or the low road? Let's go through the tower. And I think we had decided we're going to build the city up one to make it eventually encompass the lost library it will not include the production right up at front but we can cast that spell on it that'll make it include that and then in a growth spurt it'll take the gold mine and it should eventually get the library but this will give us the extra gold from the tavern and the mana from the node This would include that, but not the tavern. But I don't think it will eventually ever include the library. Alright. Oh, shoot. I, I knew what I wanted to call this. Just a second. Okay, sorry folks. We are back. And we're going to call this... I don't know why it couldn't have been easy. Heralt... Das Hein. Is that right? Herald Das Hein? Yep, that's right. Alright. This will be a city dedicated to Wodenaz, the Allfather, who came with the settlers from Aurelia as they crossed the portal. He's one of the old gods of the old world that came through. 
we don't necessarily know if he is indeed the same Allfather, because theoretically that person should be back in the Old World, but perhaps he is simply a manifestation. Perhaps the rules that govern theology in this world are different than the world that the Aurelians came from. Perhaps here belief actually creates the gods, in which case the Allfather does not exist in the Old World, but is simply worshipped, whereas in this world the worship that carried over enabled him to be created. Build another road. And can we cast a spell on an outpost? Apparently not. We shall wait then. And our archer is here to defend the city. Our scout. Why does it... Okay, fine. Go on the water. I don't care. Sarandi's so going to come back to the domain of Geldorf. This scout, this is the one going to the Dwarven Kingdom. Alright, Peralt the Sane has been founded. We know what we're doing. Builder's Hall, Storehouse, Wall. And Authority of the Sword. And we include the production. There we go. Druze will join us for 372 gold, but again, they're too far away for us to accept them at this time. I do wish to accept them, don't get me wrong. I just, we need a couple more cities first. We need to get a little closer to them. All right, we can start building stuff in Leticia, including the stables of Vigor and the Focus Chamber, two special buildings that are only available because of the things that are nearby. What does this do? Mounted units have free movement, fast healing, and high morale. So this definitely is a place where we have to build knights and cavalry. Which is interesting, because that's not really the Lattice Maiden's thing. But, oh well. And the Focus Chamber gives archers two additional attack, one shock attack, and mind control immunity. Both of these things are awesome. So I was going to build a Warlord's Command down here because the Lattice Maiden is obviously the patron goddess of Berserkers, but... Well, wait, would a Mounted Archer get the benefits of the Stables and the Focus Chamber? Because it's both a Mounted Unit and an Archer Unit. Plus the Monster Hunter is technically an Archer Unit, I think. Yeah, that's that's a good question. Maybe someone in the council knows, because I don't if a if a mounted archer is both an archer and a mounted unit or not. Regardless, that's not the first thing we have to do. The first thing we have to do is improve our growth with a public bath. Geldorf. Let's get a market. Aurelia. Hall of Chivalry, which allows us to produce knights. That's pretty good. Is that really all we've got, though? I thought... What about the, um... What allows us to produce the Cavaliers? Or does that, does that have to be the Veterans Hall that does that? Dome of the Ancestors. Yeah, the Dome of the Ancestors gives you the Cavalier. Which we do not get here. Well, that's okay. We'll build cavaliers where wherever the Stoican city is that is founded eventually. We can just focus on knights here in Aurelia. It's not like Frigoberto ever spends any time in Aurelia anyway. He's always on campaign. But it might be in our best interest in the short run to build a market here too, though. Just to get some more money. All right. Necromantic scum. No mercy. We're not going to allow you to escape and befoul the world.
we know that you'll never really disappear. If we don't destroy you, you'll just come back stronger than ever. Let's see, Satura. Halfling Reanimator. Nothing, nothing's worse than a Necromancer besides a Halfling Necromancer. Dang it. All right, Frigoberto. Put an end to this halfling menace once and for all. Excellent. And we have our knights. Our cavalry raised enough experience to become knights. That's amazing. Devastating charge, although they have physical protection. That's too bad. Priest, can you do anything? You can. One shot. Berserkers just get to the front. Monster hunters pull up right behind the berserkers and take a shot. All right, now the knights can take them. Excellent. The armies of Frigoberto are strong and diverse. And now, unfortunately, he is despairing. Let's see. Nah, it's not going to let us sneak around him, is it? Doesn't matter. We were able to flank him anyway. All right, Frigoberto. Flank him. A true hero of the Aurelian people. Nice. Okay, this gives us hit points. This gives us blight concealment. This is better. We can give the blight concealment to Garvey. Or Satura. Whoever, I don't care. Alright. We are not done yet, however. There are still necromancers. If I recall correctly. There they are. Although they are quite far away from us. There's more here. Eh. I wonder if we can scout out a place for an underground city here. Here's something good here. We have production. More production. This would be a good place for a city right here. It also has a temple of some kind. This would be a good place for a city right here. They already have cities here. What is this? Not sure. There's a luck thing here, and then there's flower fields. Oh, there's something there. Actually quite close to the entrance to our lands. We need to stop that, whatever it is. All right. We're not too far from that. We'll head that way. Our builder is not doing too well. Why? Doesn't say. Unit is in hated terrain. Blighted or volcanic? Oh, is this blighted terrain? Shoot, we're going to have to fix that up. No, it's invalid. There we go, finally. No, it doesn't look like... It might be just this one... This one space here. Just finish your road. Okay, so we can't terraform blighted. Uh-oh. Well, that is going to be a problem if this whole area is blighted and there's nothing we can do about it. 
There must be a spell somewhere. Hmm. Well, okay, so the Wodenaz city is not super happy. We're losing 15% income because of that. So we're going to have to build things that make people happier. Like a temple, definitely. We could build a mercenary camp and a flow rock citadel. The machine units have plus 10 health. The city walls restore 10 health. 20 health at the start of each combat round. Interesting. Mercenary camp. The regular units receive plus 1 melee damage, additional range damage, and defense. Our... Monster Hunters? Irregular? Yes. Yes, they are. Okay. So definitely that city is going to build a Warlord's Keep. And we'll have that bonus to our regular troops. That's fantastic. But we still need something to make these people happy. Hmm. Well, the bathhouse will do give them a little bit of happiness. And there might be spells, too. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. This is... I mean, we have to have the city located here. Because it has all this, all these goodies for us. But we could send the builder back. And we have met Phi Dural. This is a draconian... Oh! A theocrat! So we have a frosting rogue, a draconian warlord, a human dreadnought, a halfling rogue, a draconian theocrat. Interesting. And we have a dwarven something and a halfling something. So these are the only races really that exist in this world. I mean, there's small roving bands of... The other races, but nothing to write home about. Let's take the berries. I'm going to take your berries, Leonis. See how you like that. All right. All right, let's get these guys some much needed experience. Wow, they're going to fight back. That's cute. The armies of Aurelia will not be stopped by you. What are these things? Oh, the Lost Mariners. I'm like, they look really cool. They're wearing cloaks. We're not afraid of you, elves. You're a very underrepresented race in this world. Getting out of character for a minute. I, d I just want to say that I know that you can set your own enemies specifically, but that takes a lot of the fun out of it. But there should be a command, I think a lot of games need to have this command, where Endless Legend is another one too, where there should be a button or a setting that just says, make sure each race is different, right? So, so if there's six races and you want six or five opponents plus you, then have the game figure it out and make one of each race as your opponents. Now, it doesn't have to be a specific person like I don't want to select Camille Moonflower but just say hey make sure there's not two of the same race you know why can't it do that it just it seems like something really easy and and I don't understand why games don't appreciate it. and people want to have variety I mean I guess for some people maybe having two human empires is variety I guess I don't know. anyway oh I thought this is human longbowman I'm like how are they gonna retaliate my my shot. Whoa. Oh, I love that. I love that, little guys. Let's let's totally do that. Oh. I thought the ice block was going to be around the elves. Dang. All right. Well, elves are really good at archery, so definitely first thing I have to do is engage them. Excellent. And now our monster hunters can 
take out these Union Guard. And they have first strike, but not against crossbows. Ignatius? Oh, 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 Ignatius has a chicken. See how you elves like chicken. <laughs> and the griffin is just going to hang out. Just get a little closer. More monster hunters. And we have some archers. They're going to have to shoot through like three units, so they're not going to do that much damage. What do we have? We have guardians. Yeah, I'm not going to risk Anya to finish this guy off. It's not worth it. Let's get our archers up, though. And our lost mariners. How do you like guns, elves? Alright. Oh, I like it. Flashbang. Okay, these guys seem like the toughest guys. Well, not too bad. We overwhelmed them, actually. Wow. Good job, Monster Hunters. Ignatius, let's charge these guys up. And Anya. Let's fly in there on your majestic griffin. Yeah, when Anya first joined the forces of Aurelia... She was a bit of a brash hothead. She definitely chafed under the leadership of Lord Frigoberto. But over time, and ever since she fell in battle, she has grown a lot as a person. And now she is definitely the second in command of all the forces of Aurelia. She is the heir apparent to Frigoberto, should Frigoberto ever fall in battle. She has really proven herself. And so it's time for her to, to lead this expedition. Alright, sweet. It'd be great if we could just swoop in here and take out Leonis. But we're not going to do that. The council won't allow it. Alright. 40% shock protection. That's not too helpful, though, against a Dreadnought. Pest Control Squad and Physical Protection, Weapon Kit, and Dampening Field. Here we go. 200 happiness. Alright, Imperial Authority. And some hit points. Alright, so now everybody in this whole army should be really, really stoked. Yep. Alright, so poor Sarandi, she's so far away from home. Alright, what are you doing here? Alright, going to the Dwarven homeland. Nope, we've met him. He's coming out of the caves. Dwemus. Dwemus Strongmouth, a Dwarven Theocrat. Leave me alone and I might just spare your life. Okay, Dwemus, I was inclined to be peaceful with you. But if you're going to be like that, he's currently at war with Fal Dural. But he's doing okay with everybody else. Let's see, Zoki is currently at peace with us and really no contact with anyone else. Rish Kian is peaceful with Camille Moonflower. And Leonis is peaceful with us, but otherwise neutral or no contact with everyone else. Alright, so the only war going on right now is between Dwemus and Fal Doral. Interesting. 
Well, I, we've already met him, so really going into his territory seems kind of superfluous, but we can just take a look around, I guess. His throne is... I always lose his throne. Is it this one? Yeah, Varendir. All right. Well, this is the end of a council episode. So, council, you will get to determine what spell we research. Stoning is a good attack spell. Phoenix Warrior will restore our units if they fall in battle. Hero Slaying will take out heroes. Very useful if we're going to be fighting against Leonis. The Draft. Okay, we need, what we need is the Draft for a city. To make that one city happy. But it makes a... Makes a unit super happy. Regenerate walls. Warrior culture. What does that do? Okay, it's, it takes away the happiness penalty from enemy in the domain, but it doesn't necessarily hurt unhappy domain. War breeds. Advanced logistics will make our troops move faster. Warfare 3 will give us more spell casting and more spell mana capacity. Trail running will help our irregular units, which is what we're going to be producing a lot of in the new city of Wodenaz, whose name I cannot pronounce. Global Assault. A full-on military assault is launched. The caster's units gain charge and first strike and are promoted to elite rank. Wow. That's a good one, but it takes 16 turns. So, Council, you can determine what spell we're going to research. And Satura now has a raptor of her own. Aurelia has grown into a metropolis. Domain of Earth has been researched. And Council... Oh, I was going to say, you get to decide whether or not we accept Druze as part of our empire, but uh, we cannot afford to do so. Still, whatever. You can vote on that. That's fine. We can do it next turn. So, Council gets to vote on what skill to research. Council gets to vote on if we should accept Druze as a part of our empire, like an actual part of our empire. And... I'm going to post it to the council again. What should our status be with regards to the Leonis? Should we maintain open borders? Should we get rid of open borders but maintain peace? Or should we prepare for war? Council, I leave it up to you. I'm Marcus Aurelius. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good one.